Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to talk about aphids. So I just noticed that I have an outbreak of them on this rose bush that I was wintering over in the greenhouse. And I did mention in our garden tour video that we posted recently that that's one of the things I deal with in the garden. And it's just one of those unfun things about gardening. Insect control and management is just, it's not a fun thing to have to deal with, but I know that most of us are dealing with one thing or another. Um, and aphids are thankfully one of the easiest things I think to get rid of in the garden. So first of all, aphids are a soft bodied insect that like to cluster on the soft tissue of plants. So in my garden, I mostly deal with them on my upright sedums and the new growth of roses. And even though roses are technically a woody plant, this new growth is very tender. I mean, look at them clustered right here on this end, this new shoot. It's just, it's kind of gross. Commonly, you'll find them this bright green color like I have right here, but they may also be black, pink, gray, or they even can have wings because once a colony is really established, some will fly over to a new plant and start in. So what they do is they suck the sap out of leaves, which can cause um, them to look kind of crinkly or folded. And if the population is big enough and the plant is stressed enough, and this one is kind of at that stage and I can't even believe I didn't notice it, but the leaves will start to yellow kind of like this and eventually they'll start to drop off. Uh, so not only do they do that, but they also leave behind a substance. It's kind of like a shiny wet sticky substance and you can see it all over this plant. It's called honeydew and in that substance they can spread virus, fungus, um, and mold. So not a good thing, something we need to handle. So let's talk about preventative measures first because obviously the easiest way to deal with any kind of insect is to not have to deal with them at all. Um, best thing you can do is keep your plants healthy. Obviously this one is stressed out. It's been in this container way too long. I didn't repot it like I maybe should have. Um, so make sure that you are watering and fertilizing your plants properly. If they're in containers, bump them up in container side, size when they need it. And then you'll keep their stress level at a very minimum. Hopefully they're not stressed at all because bugs can sense that and they will attack the weak plants. Um, other things you can do like in vegetable gardens, you can use row covers, which allow light and moisture still into your plants, but they keep anything from crawling in. Um, and you can also plant host plants. So I know that for some of you spraying anything or using any kind of insecticide is out of the question and that's cool. Um, so host plants are really great for that. So like in the vegetable garden, I like to plant nasturtiums. They attract aphids like crazy. They have pretty flowers too. Um, but what they'll do is they'll attract all the aphids away from the crops you want to eat. Um, so if you don't mind having the bugs still present in the garden, but just on the host plant um, to keep your other plants safe, then that's a great way to do it. Next is just trying to catch any kind of problem early. So just keep your eye out. When you're out working in your garden or watering your plants, just make it a habit to look over your plants, especially if they're ones that have dealt with an insect problem before, like the second you see any shininess on your rose leaves, you might take a look like at the underside of the leaves or at the stems and see if you have any aphids starting. At that point, it's not as hard to deal with them. Um, so you can take your hose and just blast those few of them off with um, the stream of water. And that usually takes care of the problem. Um, not at this point though. I don't find when I have a huge outbreak like this that that's very effective because there's really no way I can blast every single last aphid off this plant because they are just in all the nooks and crannies. If you have an infestation like I do, there are a few methods you can use to get rid of them. The first method is biological control, which means uh, getting rid of the bugs by releasing their natural enemy, like ladybugs and lacewings. So you can buy those type of insects in bags usually, and you can release them in your garden and they feed on aphids. They also feed on a multitude of other really bad things like mealybugs, whitefly larvae, mites. The drawback is that you can't always find them. Like my parents' garden center carries those insects for maybe two months out of the year because it's the only months that they can bring them in. Um, so usually if I can get on top of it and get a few bags of those, I like to release a few thousand of them in my garden and they'll hang out usually as long as the food source lasts. And the next method is using an insecticide, but it's very mild. So it's called diatomaceous earth. Um, this is something that I can use in the summertime easier than I can in the spring or fall because you have to reapply it every time it gets wet. So if you live in a really rainy area, this is a little, this would probably be a little bit hard for you, but what it is, it's a powder that's really sharp. It's not sharp for us, but it's sharp for these little soft bodied insects. When they crawl over it, it just rips their bodies up, which sounds horrible, but it's very mild and it won't hurt other things that are flying around in your garden, like honeybees and things like that. Okay, so we had to throw an umbrella up because the sun started streaming through because my legs totally fell asleep. So I had to stand up for a while to let them come back to life. And in that time, the sun changed. And we may have to move locations here in a second because the guys are just finishing up our brick pathway today. And I see they're getting at one of their big machines, which makes a lot of noise. So anyway, I'll try to get through this 
right here. Personally, when I have an aphid problem get this bad and I have this much of an outbreak, I prefer to use an insecticide spray, something natural or organic, um, which I have three natural products right here that I will show you, um, as opposed to something synthetic. But no matter what you're using, at the end of the day, they're all insecticides, so you need to make sure that you are using them responsibly. Um, so spray at dusk after everything has kind of gone to bed, honeybees aren't working, they're not out anymore, activity's kind of at a lull, or very, very early, first thing in the morning before there's a lot of activity going on. And if you are using synthetic over something um, natural like these right here, you wanna make sure that you are suiting up properly, that you have long sleeves, gloves, a mask, um, depending on the spray. But that's why I feel so comfortable with these. Like this one right here, this is the one I'm gonna be using today. This is called Midex. This one's actually labeled for houseplants. You can use this in your home. So I just feel so much more comfortable using something like this. This one is made of a bunch of different like essential oils. Basically, I mean, cottonseed oil, clove oil, and garlic oil um, are what the active ingredients um, are in this one. And this one also controls like mites and thrips and um, a whole bunch of other things. It smells kind of nice too. So when you're spraying, you wanna make sure that you are covering the plant like from the top, from the underside. You want it to pretty much be dripping. And then you want to rotate what you're using. So typically with an outbreak like this, I need to spray once a week, at least two or three times to get it completely under control. So I'll spray with the Midex today. And then next week I will go in with this one. This is called Rose X. Um, and the active is a neem oil which is for organic gardening as well. Um, and that way you make sure that you're you know, kind of covering the whole life cycle of the aphid and you're picking up any of the extras that you may have missed the first time you sprayed. And then I brought this one out as well, which I may not have to use, but this is an insecticidal soap. Um, this works pretty good. I use this in our greenhouse. In fact, that's where I had to go get it to bring it over here today. So let me show you how I spray. It's pretty basic, but you wanna get in as close as possible to especially where all the aphids are and just give them a good dousing. Make sure that plant is dripping. Do the undersides of the leaves as well as on top, and then make sure that you're getting even the branches and down in the soil too, like the soil around your plant because bugs can drop off and be living down there. We don't want anything to crawl back up. So for those of you who are dealing with aphids and you've never dealt with them before, or you're just unsure what the best thing is to use, I hope this gives you a few natural options. Um, I feel comfortable recommending these because, you know, if you look at the label right here on the Rosex, you wanna look for something that says for organic gardening um, because it's not necessarily the best idea to walk into the store and just buy the first bottle that says that it kills aphids because it doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy or good for you or your garden. Uh, and I just feel so much more comfortable using natural products when Whenever I can. So anyway, that's it. Hopefully this video was helpful if you're dealing with aphids. And as we come across problems in our garden, we will be sure to bring you along for how we are taking care of it um, because it's just one of those things we all have to deal with and it's not fun, but it's just part of the whole process. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.